Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Joker and Riddler of gaming is back. <laughs> Sly, what's going on, buddy? What's up, Zoe? <laughs> <laughs> you know the Joker, the Joker. You know we're the Joker and the Riddler of gaming, right? Yeah. yeah, we're very, very similar. We hate each other's guts. Keep it real. We don't like each other. Yeah, of course. Keep it real. If if you were preparing some type of meal, keep it real. You were preparing some type of meal and you were going to serve it to me and you. You would drop a piece of poison in that meal. Keep it real. A hundred percent. Oh, yeah. You would poison me. <laughs> <laughs> Without a second thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. B Rob is here. Uh, Stu, Stu, Stupid Knockers, what's going on? Solo Mitch is in the building. Hold on, before we get started, slide. Let me um, let me get to the page. Hold on, but uh, how how's your week going? Everything good? Yeah, everything's good. Just moved into my new place, so yeah, yeah, that's good, man. Yeah. I'm proud of you, though. If, if there's one thing that I do like about you and respect you, you know, what I'm saying you you go out there and you get it, man. You, you don't let nothing stop you. You don't know. You know what I mean? You go. I mean, yeah, that's how you know I'm insane. Yeah. You have no emotions when it comes to nothing. When you have your mind set on something, man, you go out, you go get it. And I respect that to the, to the utmost respect. But there's one thing I did. I genuinely can say that I like about you, but everything else I hate. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but check that's it crazy. out. I need to be stopped. So, yeah, yeah, you do. No, seriously, you do. Um, but check it out. <laughs> Cooper Quick, what's going on, buddy? Uh, I will always miss the old uh, uh, old logo. Also, uh, Zobi, I miss Slipstreams. Yeah, yeah, okay, good, 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 good. Uh, the fake had taken over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this week we got we got a lot to talk about. Sly, um, Namco Bandai sold this out. Sly, I, I don't know if you like Namco Bandai games. Do you? Do, do you like Dragon Ball Z games and Naruto and, and stuff like that? I'm not really into the anime games, but I, like, I know they um they have something to do with Dark Souls, don't they? They do. They 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 publish the Dark Souls games. Uh, it was Atlas and, and Sony and things of that such, but uh, Sony didn't see any true value within the Soul series in, until Blue Point started working on the remaster and the remake, and um, for Demon Souls, but. Um, and they did Bloodborne, but they, there's still nothing on Bloodborne as of yet. And, and doing a remaster or a remake of Bloodborne, hell no. The game's already fine the way it is. Um, but anyway, we'll get into that later. But Namco Bandai sold this out. I, I will say Namco Bandai, I have used their games over the years, the Dragon Ball Z games, the Naruto games, to help build my channel. Uh, I, I The Naruto Storm series, uh, the... The extremely mediocre Dragon Ball games that were under the Namco Bandai license. Um, the great materials to use to sucker in some of the most dumbest, idiotic people on the planet. But it was a good tool to help build my channel. But, you know, still, <laughs> with that being said, they sold this out. What are you talking about, Sobe? It's just a, a logo change. I understand, but for my opinion, I think it's bigger than just the logo change. But before we get into the main topic of the show, I want to get into this slide real quick. <laughs> and I'm gonna need I'm gonna need your help because I know over the weekend or a couple of days ago, you went to go see the Venom movie, correct? Yep, just last night. Just last night. Hold on, real quick, slide. Yo, Brand Smith. What up, Zobi? It sucks that Namco is going the way uh, they are going, uh, but this is why you don't. Hold on, this is why you don't get to close to the Sony sign. You always get burnt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I was kind of nervous to do this episode because I didn't think you guys were going to be able to understand and see what I was going to be coming from. Because I, I know that people, we, we, uh, uh, us that are here, we do have a, a deep allegiance with Namco Bandai because they make some of our favorite anime games. Um, also, I was a little scared because I put up a poll and, and I noticed everybody in the poll uh, in, in the community section, I put up are people getting tired of pushing these uh, political agendas when it pertains to SJWs, 
Black Lives Matters, feminism, LBGTQ+. Now, it was a resounding yes. You know, we're getting tired of this. We don't want to see these things in our games. Do we have anything against gay people? Well, I don't. Sly doesn't either. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but, but I do have something against the agenda. And even as a black man, I have a problem with the Black Lives Matter agenda. Because I want to get into it after this, but, you know, I'm just trying to answer your donation. Yo, Nova, what's going on, buddy? I'm just answering your donation right now. But as soon as I show you guys what I'm going to show you, then we can get deep into the Namco Bandai discussion. There's a lot that I want to talk about. And, and it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Trust me. Yo, Beast, Beastie, what's up, man? Beastie, what's going on, dude? But anyway, are you sure you're excited for Spider-Man and Wolverine? Are you sure? Are you sure you're ready for Spider-Man 2? It's going to be have Miles Morales and Spider-Man fighting side by side. Are you sure? Are you sure that it's going to have Venom? Venom was lurking in the shadows. Oh my God, right? Are you sure? Are you sure you're ready for two games that don't even have release dates yet? Are you sure? Games that will be coming out clearly at the end of the PlayStation 5 life cycle. And that's going to be what, like the next four to five to three years? Knowing Sony, I, I think they're already working on the PlayStation 6 because the PlayStation 5 is just an unmitigated disaster. But are you sure you want these games? Especially when they're being uh, spearheaded and, and, and driven by Sony. A couple weeks ago, uh, PlayStation had this PlayStation showcase and they showed off Spider-Man and they showed up Wolverine and that was the darling of the shows. That was the best games that were shown for the last 10 years according to the gaming media. I mean, like Nintendo just had a Nintendo Direct slide, right? And they showed off and within a span of the next six months, Bayonetta 2, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Project Octopath Tri uh, Travelers, Triangles, whatever, things of that such, games are going to be getting in the next six months, man. Not a, 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 a what if or to be determined or no release dates in sight. Nintendo could have easily came out and showed uh, trailers to games that they got planned for the next five or six years. But no, they wouldn't do anything that stupid to try to trick and, cons and, and, and confuse you. And yet, according to the gaming media, it, it was unacceptable because of what Sony had showed. And it was just two trailers with, with no relay states. And those two trailers will be nothing like the game when you see it. You're not going to see Logan sitting up in the bar slicing up people. No, they're going to push their agendas. Especially when we get closer five or six if you think it's bad now wait till what you're going to see the next five or six years are you sure you're excited for the next venom game with, with spider-man with venom in it oh it's, it's going to be violent i get it it's going to be violent it's going to be brutal it's going to be more dark we're going to get into it but what are you going to crowbar So Venom is gay now. Oh, so Venom is gay. God. Sly. Please don't. Sly, Venom is gay now. Yeah. Show me. Yeah. You went to go. Sad. You no, no, no. Oh, so you're you're confirming it right now. I didn't see the movie. You went to go see the movie yesterday. And, and, and is Venom gay? Yes or not? There was a scene and they were like alluding to things like that. Sly, like Sly, 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 here on the external podcast, we spoil. Spoil that scene right now. Okay, yeah, um, Venom went to some type of party and got up on the stage and was talking about um, he's out of the closet or something like that. He was talking, to, he was saying um, we need to live together on the rock, on this rock and stop mistreating people and things like that. Oh. Venom was saying. Was, that seemed I, like I felt some demonic presence watch over me. My, my inward senses started tingling. Yeah. You know, like, when, uh, <laughs> like when a black person gets concerned, like they kind of like jerk their head back a little bit and look, look, look out the side of their eye. Yeah. That's what I was doing the whole time. <laughs> felt like somebody punched me in the face. I walked out of the theater with a black eye. 
that's one of my favorite comic book characters. And they had him sitting up there talking that crazy stuff. I was like, yeah, I, I know this is your favorite comic book character. I know. And 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 and, and I, I know this has to hurt you 1000%. Luckily, luckily, what I do, if it's something that's one of my favorite characters, I go, okay, this isn't this isn't the character that I grew up with. This is an alternate universe or something where, where Venom is gay. You know what I'm saying? Do I have a problem with, yeah. with, with gay people? I have no problem with gay people. I can sit in the bathtub butt naked with gay people and I wouldn't feel nothing. Really. The only thing I don't like is, 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 is the agendas. And I also don't like when I don't like dudes flirting with me. That's weird. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I understand it's 2021. Things are different now. The the food is different. The, 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 the frequencies, the comedic trails that they drop in the sky. I understand it's affecting a lot of people a certain way. But for me, I, I'm still 100% heterosexual. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, who gives a God? I mean, I give a goddamn on the aspect of the agenda. But why is it such so important to Sony to project that Venom is a gay character. Who cares? Who cares what Venom's sexual preference is? Now, were they alluding that Venom was gay in the first movie? Yes, they did. With the scene where he, the symbiote had took over the woman and the woman was kissing uh, uh, Eddie Brock. And then the woman was making a, 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 she made a sly comment trying to say like, yo, uh, he was the one that was, controlling that kiss he was the one that was all up on you it was you know what i'm saying he was the one that was added a little extra tongue when he was tonguing you down so i was just like oh man you know <laughs> <laughs> but it's See, I thought that was her like making a joke or something <laughs> no nah, i remember she made that little comment i heard that and i was just like uh, yeah yeah you know yeah Who cares it's it's like they they take our, our some of our favorite characters they take some of our favorite video games. They take some of our favorite movies and they twist it and they, they got to make it more focused on a person's sexual preference. That's all it is. It's just a sexual preference. Why does everything need to stop so that we can focus on somebody's where, where they decide to stick their penis and or vagina? I didn't even know this was a problem. How do we skip over all the problems of the world? I mean, homelessness, right? These companies that are pushing these, these agendas are so rich, they can end homelessness right now. Do they do it? No, no, no. We have uh, uh, wars that we can end. We won't do that. We bomb other countries that don't, that, that don't fit in our political agenda. And then after we finish bombing them, we go over there and we start pushing more women into to political positions and we start pushing more homosexuality and things of that such. What's going on? Is this new? Is this what's going on new? It's been going on. No, it's been going on for a very long time. But it seems like it seems like it's just for the past couple of years, it's been this rush. It's been this mad dash. It's been this dramatic mad dash to just push it and push it. We need to push it now. What the heck are these people scared about? What are they worried about? Do they feel like if we can effeminate the man, if we can effeminate these people, that we can control them better? That's what it sounds like to me. Listen, I'm old relics. Like me and you, we're old relics. We believe in an old way. We are the we're the main targets that they want to get rid of. And they know yeah, we believe in tradition. Yes, we believe in tradition. We believe in the most high. We are the ones that, that they want out of the freaking way. And they know that the best way that they can get to people like me and you, Sly, is through fiction. Because in my opinion, in my opinion, fiction is fact. When I look at Venom and I look at, at and you can, oh, oh, no, it's just this alien creature from outer space that took over a man's body. And it's, no, when I look at Venom, I look at it deeper than that. When I saw Spider-Man 3, your favorite movies, uh, Sly, 
When I saw Spider-Man 3 and I saw when the symbiote had took over Peter Parker, what was Peter Parker acting like? Black. Yeah. He started playing the saxophone. He was walking down the street doing all the huggle buggle, whatever the, these modern day dances these kids are doing nowadays. <laughs> I, and it, that's when I knew, I said, when I look at this, when I look at this black substance, I'm automatically connecting it with black. Melanin, if you will. That's how Caucasian people look at melanin as well. Like it's some type of alien substance that can take over it's your some type of black goo. Yeah, no, I'm serious. They do. The, the liberal Caucasian. Go back and watch. Go back and watch Get Out. Go back and watch Get Out. And the guy at the end, when he was talking to the guy, he, he was like, Man, well, why black people, man? He said, Man, this ain't got nothing to do with race. I, I just want your eyes, man. You, you guys are faster. You're stronger. I just want that body. And with that body, with my genius and your body, I can rule the world for centuries. That's how they think. That's how the liberal Caucasian thinks. He thinks that, that your body, you're so stupid that you don't even know the abilities that you have with your own body. And the same goes with the Venom symbiote. If I'm able to get yeah, that, even talking about that in the movie. Yes, if I'm able to get that freaking melanin, I will be the ultimate being. But since I'm in this current skin suit that I'm in right now, I have to use my wisdom to conquer you, to conquer this world. I'm sorry to get all racial and things of that such. I apologize, but this is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> So when I look at this 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 venom and, and and venom is gay now and 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 what really bothers me is that Sony is connected with Venom and Sony is going to be using the Venom character to create games and and I look at the current landscape of Sony and the, the political agendas that they are pushing in these games, especially as something as simple as Ratchet and Clank. Lord knows the things we're going to be seeing when it pertains to Venom and Wolverine in the future. If this was Sony uh, 10, no, excuse me, 20 years ago, then I would have been like, okay, I'm on board. But it's, it's, it's getting real spooky. Let's talk about man. Um, Magus, is that his name, man? He talks about fake. it. Yeah. Please tell me this is fake. It's not fake. Look, you know what? I think we've already. I think I think me and you've already broke this down better than, than he can break it down respectfully to to Magus. Yeah, I think we don't need to sit there and watch this, man. I think we've already did it. The people would rather hear rather hear us babble and, and, and complain anyway. Uh, it's everywhere. Social media algorithms are pushing it to the kids. Gender dysmorphia is at a record low. The subversion of culture and society has been happening about a hundred years. They did it slowly over time and things are now coming to a head. Throw up your exes. Look and lunker. Look, look and lunker. I hope to lamb cause the four horsemen soon. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the chat is turning up. I was a little nervous. I thought the chat room wasn't going to be able to understand where I was coming from because I know how much they love their fictional characters, and I do as myself. And not only that, when it pertains to the main topic of the show with Nanko Bandit, because I, I I know I built this channel off of the back of Nanko Bandai, and I was just I was gonna be real. I was real scared because I know this. I was I did a stream earlier and Katz was defending Namco Bandai, and they didn't even know that Namco Bandai didn't even make those Dragon Ball Z games that they love twenty years ago. Man, I love Namco Bandai, but man, uh, what they did with Dragon Ball Z Two Kaichi Three, man, and I was like, they never made Ten Kaichi Three. Go back and look at the cover. Go back and look at the cover. Nanko Bandai, ever since they got involved with these anime licenses, 
these anime games have been going downhill. I can't, I can't think of anybody. I don't know anybody that can sit here and actually give praises to any of the modern day anime games. Every time I talk to somebody about a damn anime game, it's the Budokai series, Budokai Tenkaichi, and uh, some stupid Game Boy Advance game, uh, Dragon Ball Z, Revenge of Goku, and things of that such. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, before we get into the main topic with Nanko Banda, because I got a lot to talk about when it pertains to that, but let's quickly go through our notes. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Um, Sly, check this out. Oh, yeah, and, the, and, and, and look, so it looks like, and these are the people, and this is the reason, I, yo, Sly, yo, tell everybody in the chat room, I had a nervous breakdown earlier today. I had one at least once a day, but I had a nervous breakdown. Because they were uh, posting, they were posting that a new Daredevil was coming. It's finally happening, a new Daredevil. And I was like, didn't they just do a new damn Daredevil? They just did Daredevil. Yeah, I said the same thing. I was driving my car and almost crashed on purpose because I was so mad. Like, <laughs> we literally just, we literally just had some type of Daredevil series on Netflix. Now they want to like reboot it already and start another one. Yeah, I, I, I was like, I'm tired, man. I'm I'm tired. This is corny now, man. I'm sorry. I'm tired of superhero movies. I'm tired of girls twerking. I'm tired of cosplayers. I'm tired of nerds. Like I'm just I'm just tired. It's it's just corny now, man. They told the story that they wanted to tell the last 10 years and they ended it off perfectly with uh not in game, but the other one, uh, Infinity War. Yeah. Now they're just going to be taking these stupid characters and pushing their weird agendas to the max. And these are the people that they 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 cater to. These are the people that are going to be hyped up for the new Spider Man game. These are the people that are going to be hyped up for the new Wolverine game. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this, Look at this lady. She's insane. Oh. And uh, who's your favorite Marvel comics hero? Mine is Superman. Remember the motto? With great power comes great responsibility. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you again soon. This lady's insane. And these are the people dictating what they put in these movies. Exactly. These are the people. <laughs> this is like this said, who is your favorite Marvel superhero? She said, she said, mine is Superman. <laughs> <laughs> And with great power, the lady's insane. And these are the people that go to see this garbage. These are the people that they cater to. Not the comic book fans. They don't give a damn about us. The business would be booming if they did. This business would be booming. But no, they need to push their global narratives. It's insane. I can't believe this is real. I can't believe the Matrix is breaking down this badly. <laughs> Where people Did are you just... notice how people were losing their minds over that Venom movie? Yo, oh, my, like yes. Oh, was, Sly, like thank you, you so much. To be, um, go ahead, I'm sorry. You said what? No, no, I said thank you, but go ahead. Go ahead, please, break it down. Oh, yeah, people people who are normally like real, uh, like real observant with this kind of stuff, they were giving the movie passes, praising the movie, saying it was the greatest movie they had ever seen. What did this movie do to them? Yo, like, did it make them feel like they were free or something? Did Yo. it give them like a new outlook on life? It was. Like, what's going on here? I, I think it was that Qualtrics, bro. I mean, like, I didn't even know the movie came out. Sly, like, just let me tell you how creepy this is. I didn't even know the damn movie came out, Sly. I didn't even know they made it Venom too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so wrapped up in the in the in the in this a new reality. I didn't even know the new Venom, they was making a Venom 2. And all of a sudden, it came out, like, out of nowhere. I didn't know. And then, all of a sudden, uh, uh, a guy that's in our Discord, he got demonically possessed after he came back watching the movie. It was it was insane. And I gave him, I was giving him a pass. He was, he was in the Discord, and he was like, Carnage is great. Carnage, 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 Carnage. And I'm just like, okay, I, I, you know, I'm going to allow him to have a good time. He had a good time. Okay, I, I understand. But, but it was going on for two, 
two days, you know, it came the next day. The next day, it was carnage, 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 carnage. And I was just like, okay, this is, all right, now I'm annoyed. You know what I mean? And what's weird is that, what I don't know what's in the popcorn. I don't know what, what type of, what they were showing in that movie. Did they take a, a Venom and, and because you know, Sly, they, what they do is secretly, they do it so fast in these movies that you don't even catch it. Where yeah. Eddie Brock could be on camera wiggling his his penis like you know what I mean, and you don't, <laughs> and you don't even see it, right? It, it happens so fast that you don't catch it with your eye, but your subconscious mind checks it, uh, clicks it in, right? Your subconscious mind yeah. is extremely advanced. It's it, it's so advanced that it's you can you can time travel with your mind. That's how powerful this mind is, and. When, when 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 you're able to capture the subconscious mind, you can control the masses of the people all over the planet. And by saying that, when they flash little things in there like obey and consume and, and comply and all that, you start to get taken over by these things if you're not a strong-minded individual. And that's what I saw when Chad came back into the Discord talking about Go see, uh, go consume venom. Go buy venom. Go see venom. And I was just like, why? Who cares? It's a stupid movie. That it's a stupid venom movie. I'm tired of seeing these damn superhero movies, man. This was corny. I have more fun watching the Green Knight in, in, in the span of ten years of superhero movies that I saw. Yeah. <laughs> still thinking about Green Knight to this day. Yeah, me too. That was a great movie. Yeah. I want to see it again. Yeah, I got to see it. Hopefully, we can put it on these little streaming services for free so I can I can analyze and break that thing down again. But anyway, so he just started doing bye, 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 consume, consume, consume. And I was like, damn, that was that goddamn Sony Qualtrics, that Sony programming where you can get these weak-minded people, especially if you ate that Popeye sandwich, you can get these people... <laughs> <laughs> you can get back and that mother, these motherfuckers hit the web. It's great. Go buy. Go consume. Go buy. Go watch. Go watch. And I'm like, damn, what the freak? I had to say something. If I didn't say nothing, he would have still been doing it to this day. For a Venom movie. And he told, and this is the thing, I don't understand why people, just because I don't want to suck a penis doesn't mean I'm I'm some type of deranged weirdo. And what I mean by that is. Sly, I'm not Sly, I'm sorry. Chad was trying to say, yo, Zoob, you're going to like the movie because he t Carnage tells a girl to shut the F up, B. B I <laughs> Did he say that in the movie, uh, 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 Sly? Yeah, pretty much. Was it the, was it the, was it the, the black girl? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not surprised. I didn't even see the movie, Sly, and I already knew he told the black woman to shut the F up, B. <laughs> How did I know that, Sly? I mean, what other options could there be? Yeah. I'm not surprised that Sony put that in one of their movies. Sony's always disrespecting black women in their freaking entertainment. Did you see what they do with the black woman in these Naughty Dog games? Did you see what uh, uh, Ellie Eleanor did to the black girl in that Last of Us 2? She killed the black girl, brutally killed the black girl, but let Abigail, the trans character, get away. And the, the trans character was the character that killed Joel. Yeah, and you played as that thing throughout the whole rest of the game. Yeah! <laughs> did you see what they did with the black woman in Uncharted 4? They had her knuckling up with a grown man. With these big buff arms. Yeah, but like, people think I'm some type of deranged uh, weirdo. I'm some type of evil person that I, you tell me that's going to be in the movie. I'm automatically going to be like, yeah, no, I'm not a bad person. I'm not an evil person. I don't go around and just telling women to shut the F up, B. Just because I don't want to suck a penis does not mean that I'm some type of homophobe. I just don't want to suck a penis. Just because I don't want to comply to, to a, a, a nation where lead, uh, women are going to be ruling the nation doesn't mean that there's something wrong with me. As a man, I know where that's going to go. 
Women can't just rule on their own. They have to bring somebody down in order to feel like they're ruling. I see what they do with themselves, with their own women. But anyway, I'm sorry, Sly, we're getting, we're getting way too political. They're going to get us, Sly. <laughs> All I'm saying is F Venom. That's what I'm really saying. Punk as Venom and that punk as Spider-Man 2. We're going to get into You know, I might as well get into that right now, Sly. Hold on, look at this. I got this in my damn modes. Punk ass Venom. It's punk ass Sony. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this slide. Marvel Spider Man 2 is being compared to Empire Strikes Back. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this slide. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Are> they <laughs> yeah, look, look, slide. Look at the look at the programming already. We just gave it to come out to another five years. Look at this. Look at this. Spider Man 2 will be darker than the first game. I'm not surprised. Whatever that means. Marvel Games, Bill, Marvel Games, Bill Roseman. I have no idea who that is. If uh, the first Spider-Man game was Star Wars, Spider-Man 2 is kind of our empire. Basically saying like Empire uh, Strikes Back from, uh, from the Star Wars franchise. It gets a little darker. Also mentions that the Wolverine trailer has some, some Easter eggs. Wow, please. What? Yeah. But listen, they're, they're already comparing this. We talk about this every week, Sly, where these these companies, especially when they do it with the Marvel movies and they do it with uh, Sony exclusives. Well, they'll sit here and be like, oh, my God, <laughs> that reminded me of a Pixar movie, man. You know, and you'd be like and you look at it and you'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Or if you watch a movie, if you watch one of these Marvel movies. And once the reviews come out, they'll be like, oh, my God, that reminded me of a Sam Raimi movie, man. <laughs> oh, my God. You know? Oh, my God, that reminded me of a Stanley Kubrick movie. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't want to go see this, Dan. I, I want to see some originality. I want to see some creativity. I don't want to see something that reminds me of something else. That's corny. I've already seen it. It's yeah, played it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I remember uh, like when Winter Soldier came out, they were comparing it to James Bond for some. Yes, reason. Uh, uh, James Bond and the um, and the uh, the Jason Bourne. Remember, I remember that yeah, slide. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god, this reminds me of a James Bourne movie. <laughs> and then you're an idiot. You're coming out of the movie and you're you're regurgitating the same crap. <laughs> Yo, you got to see this, man. <laughs> it reminds me of. <laughs> And they're already getting started when it pertains to Spider-Man 2. They're already comparing it to the end. This is going to be our Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, the first move, the first game is crap. I played it. It's a watered down Ubisoft game. And it's worse than the Batman Arkham Asylum games. It's freaking boring. You can get the platinum blindfolded. I'm telling you, man, I'm going to ride this Spider-Man 2, this Wolverine, all the way until launch. And guess what? At the end, I'm always right, and I will always say, I told you so. Oh, look at this uh, slide. Question. Are sexy female character des designs offensive to you? Ever since the reveal of Project Eve, I've seen several takes Dec uh, decrying female leads with sexy body types or wearing outfits that show it off. Curious on how you feel about them, good or bad. This has always been a topic of discussion over the years, um, especially when it's it's a way to, it, it's basically what's happening over there in Nanko Bandai and how Nanko Bandai sold out to the modern day media where they feel like these uh, female characters is just a little bit too overly sexualized here in the States. Um, over there in Japan, things like that are of, of not very importance to them when it pertains to the female body type. You can walk into a store and they will literally have dirty magazines laying around just normally, you know, here in America. We yeah, get, yeah, yeah, they had they had stuff like um, in Japan, they had like just plastered on the walls. Mm -hmm. I went into one store. It was supposed to be like a video game store. I saw like the wildest stuff just plastered to the wall. I turned around and walked out. <laughs> yeah, so whenever these uh, male 
simps. Um, whenever when, when they got into the media, they really started to push this whole, you know, Japan is degrading women, and we're going to get into it when we get into our Bandai Namco discussion. But I just wanted to put this out there before we get there. Uh, in my opinion, do I really care? No, I don't really care if a character has big, big a big breast, uh, a big booty, or anything like that when it pertains to the to the video games. I don't care about the outfits and things of that such. I just don't want to. I'm a person that has a more. I'm a more offended when people want to censor somebody over uh, their creativity or, or their artwork. If that's what the person wanted to do, then that's what the person wanted to do. This is art at the end of the day. This is not something where you can push your stupid liberal political agendas and adding politics to everything. That's stupid. The reason that I love art so much is because it was a way to express oneself freely and not have to sit there and worry about people sitting there and judging them because in their opinion, they feel like you're offending me, man. That's so stupid to me. But if, her, if she was Wait, wearing, hold on. Yeah. Because my inward senses are tingling. Go a ahead, bit go again. ahead, please. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is offensive. Yeah. But what we saw in The Last of Us 2 wasn't. You know, you know which scene I'm talking about, right? Oh, that wasn't offensive. You see what I'm saying? It's it's it, if we do it in America, if we can show off this whatever that character was uh, in The Last of Us Two, and then some type of weird looking Caucasian guy ramming him, ramming him or her in the in the back. I don't want to uh, uh, misgender the person. You know what I'm saying? That was okay. That was considered art. That was beautiful. That was oh, that was game. Brave. Of, yeah, that was brave. That was game of the year. But if a character is wearing some type of skimpy outfit in Project Eve, I don't even know what Project Eve is. Um, you know what I mean? But for some reason, here in the West, especially in California, they have a big problem with the things they are seeing, and I and that's one of the things. I was going to do an episode where I felt like they were going to ban Japanese games in the next five to six years. That's what I was feeling like, especially if Japan doesn't get down with the program. They will find a way to make sure that these games don't get here. And if that happens, I'm going to have to move to Japan. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm like I said, I don't, I don't play these damn games for, to get my sexual things off. I, I you know, I, I just play, I didn't think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a great game because Pyra had a big bus size. I just thought I thought the game was tr trash, in my opinion. Big bus size or not. Um, hold on, what was I about to get into? I think I was... Oh, yeah, we got to get into slide. Check this out, man. Now, according to Colin Moriarty, the, the Sony fanboys took his words and they clipped it and um, hold on, before I go there, but let me let me find the ad, the thing first. I got a lot of notes here, but we can't get into it all because we'll be here for over three to four hours. But before we go here, slide. Let me check out the chat room real quick. Uh, Project Eve is made by Koreans. Okay, cool. I, I, you're smarter than me. I'm just that's not really uh, the main point of what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? But thank you so much, uh, Zobi. Did you play Death uh, Death Loop? The game is F trash, man. Yeah, I, I, that was a game that they gave nines and tens, but I didn't hear anybody talk about it. Maybe because it's a Sony exclusive currently. That uh, thanks for. I'm only 23, but I'm a clean guy. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't have tattoos. I try to stay clean. I I feel like a loser for having a good heart when evil people are winning. Yeah, man. But but, but please stay focused. Stay focused. Continue to be good because. <laughs> People like us are considered the bad guys. People like me and Sly, just because we're calling out the agenda, uh, we will be considered bad people to a lot of these, to, to, to what's going on. And to a degree, we are bad. Uh, <laughs> to a degree, we, yeah, to, to a degree, we are evil. But I feel like I just I feel like I'm a vigilante to a degree. I feel like I, one of the things that I, I love so much about the Batman and the Spider-Man characters is the philosophy that the people of Gotham or the people of New York City or even law enforcement look at or, or the media in J. Jonah Jameson 
they look at Spider-Man and, and Batman as bad people. You know what I mean? So I just, I like that philosophy when it pertains. So that's the way I look at myself as just nothing more than just a gaming vigilante that's just kind of taking down evil. <clears throat> We're going up against, the, the, you know, the Riddlers and the Jokers and things of that such. Oh, the, the, uh, uh, another good thing is when these people try to pretend like they're good, but they're really evil. And I need you to go back and watch Superman, the animated series, where Lex Luthor was running for president. And he, he was he was doing all the right stuff when it pertains to political reasons. But Superman knew that this dude was a bad person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know you're doing something, Lex Luthor. Even though the people might not see it, even though the Greg Millers and the Parises and the Alana Pierces are able to trick and confuse the masses. But I'm Superman and I go, I know what you're doing and I know you're deceiving the people. But please stay focused. Uh, um, don't don't ever succumb. To, to evil ever the most high will always bless you as long as you stay focused uh japanese games yeah, they won't be winning for long yes yes they will not be winning for long trust me they are rushing for a reason they are yep. rushing to, they sense it. yeah yeah yes yes like what you just said is absolutely correct and, and for me and you who are, are blessed by the most highs the most highs chosen with me and you we can we we know it's over we can feel that it's over. You know what I mean? We're kind of just doing it for bragging rights. We're just kind of here to just do it to say, I told you so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Japanese games will never be banned in the West thanks to Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, thanks to Nintendo. But hopefully we can get to our notes tonight where they're coming for Nintendo, man. Nintendo's, Nintendo's still not really crossing that line when it comes to pushing that agenda. But... The person that said that, uh, sorry if I go on a side channel, I'm just answering your comment. The person that said that we're not going to go in that direction of the agenda was, um, what's the, the the black guy that got fired? He, he claims he went to go, he quit because he wanted to spend time with his wife. I don't know what type of insane man would do that. What's his name? Um, slide. Uh, Reggie. Yeah, yeah, Reggie. Not Reggie Miller. What's his name? Reggie something. Reggie something. Yeah. Some, some weird like Hawaiian name or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe he's a Haitian man. But Reggie uh, feels, a, whatever, he was talking about we're not going to push any political agendas when it pertains to Nintendo. And all of a sudden, right after that, a few months later, he got kicked out and it brought in this Caucasian guy named Doug Bowser. Sly, we're going to have to keep a close eye on Doug Bowser for now. Uh, nothing bad has happened as of yet but just let's just keep it close let's just make a mental note to doug bowser and let's see if he is willing to succumb to um to, to the media you know to, to the bull crap you know yeah because you know they like to play the long game yes yes yes, yes. They like start trickling stuff in over the years and yeah and then all of a sudden get real bold yeah all of a sudden they just boom we're there and you'd be like how do we get here and oh doug bowser uh, Bandai Namco is amazing, but they made so many good games for the PS2, like Zatch Bell. Are you sure Namco Bandai made that? Go back and Google it. I want you to go back and Google Zatch Bell, and I want you to come back and let me know who really made that. Some people think that it was an anime game back in the day. That means Namco Bandai has something to do with that. Namco Bandai is basically a publishing company. So what Nanko Bandai would do was go out and I would hire these people to work on their games. So they'll get level five, they'll get Cyber Connect 2, they'll get uh, uh, this person over there and they'll get this person over there and they'll get uh, the, the, the From Software and they'll basically help these companies pu publish these games. Now, if they're going to publish their game now, nowadays, with the, we're gonna get into it later, but when they publish their game nowadays, I'm going too far off at the deep end, but let me just finish this topic. But when they publish your game now, they're going to come in and they're going to say, you know what? We don't want that there. You know what? I want Goku to say this. I want Goku to say that his butt hurts. But it feels but it but it feels good though. It, it hurts, but it feels good. You know what I mean? I want Naruto, I want more kissing scenes with Naruto and Sasuke. You know what I mean? Yeah, Doug is a real cool. Yeah, let's keep a close eye. Let's keep a close as Bergie and I on Doug Bowser. Uh, let's get back to our show. Uh, so let's get back to the show. I didn't hit the chat room up. 
I got to check with my people. Those are my boys up in there and my ladies and my ladies. I know you're watching too, ladies. I, I watch. I look at the statistics. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Colin Moriarty had a, a big debacle over the week. Slide. I'm not sure you've seen this, but for now on, when you let me know you're going to be part of the show, I'm going to slide you the notes so that you can have a quick run through and things of that such. But Colin Moriarty, um, the this guy right here, we're going to get into the clip. As a matter of fact, we'll, we'll get into the clip right now. Andres Gutierrez, he, he's a big time Sony fanboy on Twitter. Um, but I guess he took a, a clipping of the Colin Moriarty show. If you don't know about Colin Moriarty, he used to do a show with Greg Miller. And for years, I had a problem with Greg Miller and Colin Moriarty. Because I felt like I they were the ones that brought the biasness to gaming media back in the day when i used to watch a review uh uh i felt like hey they were being as objective as possible and it didn't have to tie with the, the brand it didn't have to tie in with with money and things of that such i felt like the gaming reviews back in the day have been just you know they've been per even if i didn't agree with them they still were making points to to the point where i go Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point, and that's a good point. But I still like, I still like the SmackDown game. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I still want to wrestle with The Rock and, and, and Brock Lesnar and John Cena. You know, <laughs> even though they was gave it a six point five, and I, you know, when I start reviewing my games or uh, things of that such, I'm going to follow that strict path that they did. You know, not everything is a nine and ten. Not everything is a nine and an eight. Not everything is a goddamn seven. And up, even though re these reviews, you look now, nothing is below an eight now, Sly. They gave Super Monkey Ball, respectfully. I know a couple of the, you know, Super Monkey Ball fans are going to come in here and get angry. They gave Super Monkey Ball eights and nines and tens. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Come on. You yeah, haven't seen a game get below an eight unless it was like broken and you just couldn't play it. Yeah. And they gave it like a seven. And even still, they were giving it. They gave respect. To, I, I like Cyberpunk 2077, even though I didn't play it, or, or, or games like Fallout 4 that I did play. Those games were broken, and they were given those nines and tens. Yeah. I, the only time I saw them give them a low score if it was, like, exclusive to Xbox or Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time they get real with you, you know? Keeping it real. But you'd be like, wait, what the freak? You look at some of these reviews now, and you know, you'd be like, God, a 10? I'm playing Tales of Arise right now, a great RPG, but come on, it, nowhere near nine or 10. Let's stop. But now I know why they give it a nine and a 10 because of what we're going to be talking about today. Namco Bandai has submitted uh -oh. to the, yeah, Namco Bandai has submitted to the gaming media. So best in believe, we're going to be seeing more games like Code Vein, God Eater. And tells of getting nines and tens, and then when you play it, you be like, "Man, what the, I mean, this I like this. This is cool." But a, a nine and ten to me, when I think of nines and ten, you guys are you're a younger generation than me. You're about ten years younger than I am. So these review skills are, are probably not a big deal to you because you came up under this. You know, you, I'm not trying to disrespect you. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to show you the gener generational difference. So you might not understand what I'm saying, um, but. To a degree. But when I look at nines and tens, I'm thinking like this is going to be the greatest game of all time. Like this is up there with the Final Fantasy Sevens. This is going to be the Chrono Triggers. You know what I mean? Uh, uh the Metal Gear Solids, the 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 you know, when I look at nines and tens, and then it tells of it's a game that you could play for a couple of days if you're playing it on normal, you could just run through the game really easily. But when I'm playing this tells of tells of tells of a rise, it's cool. But I don't see no damn nine in the ten. I'll, I'll give it an eight at best. If it was the modern me, if for me, I'll give it a seven. Okay, it was just a, it was just a whatever a ravage the RPG. But anyway, I have a big problem with Colin Moriarty, Greg Miller, especially the things that I've seen them doing over the years. It, it was it's just it, despicable. And then this is the reason why. Look here. Microsoft buying any of those companies would be fucking heinous with a capital H. Look at this. And it would make people hate Microsoft oh, if they went and did something like that. I'll tell you. 
they, they do, do shit, shit like this, this at their own peril unless they bought one of these cultures and left them completely alone. No one is going to tolerate a reality in which Microsoft gets take two and then takes Grand Theft Auto away from 150 million people that own GTA 5 or something like that. It's just nuts. And, and I, I think, think it's, it's I've been pretty, pretty nice to Microsoft. Microsoft. And I, I think that they deserve a lot of the kindness that comes from the show. Not that they care one way or the other. I think they're doing a nice job. But here's the fucking reality of the situation. Microsoft has done very little with studios that it has nurtured and founded itself. And it is going around and grabbing things off of the market because it cannot satiate that demand internally. And that is not a problem that is happening with PlayStation. And that is the two things that differentiate the two. And by the way, if Sony came out and said, we're buying Take-2, I'd be like, that sucks. What? You know, a lot of people were rumored about the Square Enix thing and all that. I'm like, that would suck. I want Sony to make new teams. I want Sony to make new IP. But they're not. And maybe buy one or two teams that you work with, which is they're always been their tradition. But no one can go and say, like, Sony has gone and really injured other companies with their acquisition. So. What? Yeah. He must be smoking something. Yeah. Didn't we just see the, the, the demise of Japan Studio? Exactly. I mean, it's... <sighs> I, I'm still I'm still crushed to this day over this J- J- Japan Studio thing. But that's all you need to say. Colin Moriarty is basically saying if Microsoft was to acquire Take-Two... Now... When you look at this video, there's another video as well. There's like, there's another video where the another guy is saying something. If you look at it, the thing that I um that I noticed the most when I was looking at this video, hold on. There's another clip with the, there's a guy talking and they're talking crazy about Microsoft. And but let Sony buy Square Enix, let Sony buy Take Two and Grand Theft Auto. And all of a sudden, yo, oh my God, yo, yo, you, you know what they would say? Yo, stop being a fanboy and buy all the consoles so you can enjoy all the games. But it's Microsoft. Hey, man, that's not fair, man. You're restricting so many people. It's not fair, man. I don't like it, man. That's not fair, man. Oh, it's just nuts. nuts. Decade. There we go. Okay. okay. My, my perspective, perspective Soft's greatest strengths, strengths is there. I want to argue about the theory. What, what was, was the point, point of that? that? What, what was the, the point, point of double fine? fine? I mean, I mean obviously, obviously, it's like, like a last two. It looks like Microsoft oh. buying any of those companies would be fucking heinous Excuse me. with a capital H. H. And it would make people hate Microsoft. No one is going to tolerate a reality in which Microsoft gets take two and then takes Grand Theft Auto away from 150 million people that own GTA 5 or something like that. It's just nuts. Here's the fucking reality of the situation. Microsoft has done, done very little with studios, studios that it has nurtured and founded it itself. And it is going around and grabbing things off of the market because it cannot satiate that demand internally. And that is not a problem that is happening with PlayStation. And, and that, that is the two things that differentiate the two. But no one can go and say, like, Sony has gone and really injured other companies with their acquisitions. And I look at Xbox, there are some teams where I'm like, come on, man. You guys are just buying things. But why would you buy, like, Ninja Theory? What was the point of that? What was the point of what? Double Fine? I mean, obviously, obviously Psychonauts 2 is really great, but in terms of culture. And so Wait, I just think that. He that just was... said, he just said that, you know, Sony is buying companies that aren't hurting anybody. And he applauded Sony for that. But now he's upset at Microsoft for acquiring companies that he feels like we're not going to hurt anybody because he's saying, what's the point? Of buying Ninja Theory and Psychonauts. Sly, you there? I think I lost Sly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I know you have to say you have to step away. Is everything good? Yeah, everything's good. Okay, I'm cool. Just, like thinking about what this dude just said. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yo, yo. Now he's saying that these little smaller studios that uh, uh, they acquired. Why? What was the big deal of that, man? I mean, come on. And I, I can say the thing, thing, same thing about Sony. They just acquired Housemark. You know, Housemark yeah, is like, Housemark. Yeah. And they just bought some type of another company called Blue Something. I never heard of them. Blue Points. They've been they've 
been acquiring all types of students you never even heard of. And you're thinking, what the hell is the point of this? And how the hell is this better than Japan Studios that Sony did nothing with? I can go down the list of, of he's talking about where Sony, where they actually do work with the, what are you talking about? They didn't do anything with Japan Studios. They didn't do anything with, with the creators of Order 1886. They didn't do anything with the creators of PlayStation Battle Royale. They didn't do anything with the creators of SOCOM. Sony is known for leaving their companies high and dry. Oh, God. That would be another, another move, move like, like that, that where... And, 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 and what Microsoft does with their studios, I feel like is better than anything Sony has done with their studios. Yo, say what you want. Naughty Dog is done. Naughty Dog is finished, Sly. What can how can they how can they how can they come back after the last of us, man? They dug their own grave. They so dug their back. own grave. It is over for Naughty Dog. What has Sony done? Okay, they got Insaniac, and Insaniac's working on Spider-Man. So what? And Ratchet and Clink, a game that didn't sell. What is Sony doing with their acquisitions that's so great? They can't even get over 5 million sold in copies of games. Dude, they had to go out and buy their own games. Just yeah. Just in the sales. For real. But I feel like what Microsoft has done with their acquisitions are, in my opinion, are better. And are, and, and, and yes, the, 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 the Elder Scrolls. And, and, and he was saying um, he, uh, he understands why Sony, he was okay with Sony acquiring studios that they've been doing work with over the years, like, like Insomniac, right? Even though Insomniac was making games with uh, Xbox and they, they made that game uh, Sunset Overdrive. You know, but it's like um, Elder Scrolls or Bethesda has had a tight relationship with Microsoft over the years. I remember the reason I bought the Xbox 360 is because of the Oblivion. I was at the store. I was looking for an RPG. I didn't know anything about Western RPGs, but I was just looking for every time I buy a console, I always want an RPG. So I'm looking at this Oblivion and I'm reading the cover and it says RPG of the year, uh, 67 awards at E3, uh, 70,000. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, this is, this sounds lit. <laughs> and, and that was, you know, the, the Microsoft deal that they had um, with, with Bethesda. And not only that, there was an achievement system. And then later on, PlayStation came out and they got Oblivion way later, later. There was no achievement system. It was a watered down version of Oblivion. Skyrim was a was a was a weak version compared to the Xbox version. Uh, I remember that when it came to DLC, that they were talking about not adding DLC for Skyrim because of the inferior console and the Xbox 360. They got all of the DC, and I remember there was this big petition. This is years ago. A big petition to not support Bethesda because they won't give us the same DLC that they're giving to Xbox. Uh, Xbox and micro Xbox and uh, uh, Microsoft and Bethesda have been kissing cousins for years. The writing was on the wall for those two to join forces, and in my opinion, the greatest acquisition of all time. But anyway, I don't know what the future is going to behold, but on paper, it sounds amazing. Starfield, it's some type of outer space Skyrim Fallout type game, sounds amazing, right? Uh, Elder Scrolls 7 or 6, wherever we're at, sounds amazing. Another Fallout, sounds amazing, especially when it's going to be exclusive to the Xbox Game Pass and the Xbox ecosystem. Sounds amazing. You can play it for free for $9.99 a month. Sounds amazing. How does this, I don't understand how this hurts the gamer. How does this hurt the gamer, Sly, when you're able to play games for free? Still trying to wrap my mind around, to be honest. I don't understand it. 
I don't get it. How is this hurting people? Why are and these people that claim to be hurt? Why aren't they punished? Why aren't they called fanboys? Why aren't people coming after them and saying, hey, you need to go buy an Xbox if you want to play these games? Why do we have to sit there and coddle to these people? Because they're going to hate Microsoft. They already hate Microsoft. Microsoft was the number one most hated company, according to a new report. Twitter users hate Microsoft. Why? They didn't even acquire this new gaming studio and people already hate Microsoft. I don't get it. I don't understand all this massive hate. I mean, technically, I do know. You know why, Sly. Yeah. Yeah. You got, yeah, call tricks, you got them by the mind. Not only that, I, I say this all the time. Microsoft did something that wasn't supposed to happen. Microsoft destroyed PlayStation with the Xbox 360. Destroyed. PlayStation lost trillions of dollars because of the place uh, because of the Xbox 360. And people are still mad about that, including the gaming media. Because the people who are gaming media today were 15, 14, 16 year old weirdos sitting on the internet crying and complaining how great PlayStation was. And now that they got a chance to get it within the media, now they can push their little crazy agendas. It never should have happened. Microsoft destroyed PlayStation. Council sales, game sales, and they never want that to happen again. This is the reason why they look they look stretched. Look at this, they look crazy. Any, Any of those companies, companies of Microsoft's Literally. greatest strengths is their ability to open up their wallet and buy things for their console. Well, but 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 Sony is doing the same thing. I don't give a damn what Jim Ryan says. Yeah, we believe in building our studios organically. In the past month, they've already bought five or six studios. There's nobody ever heard. Uh, but, but you can't say that we're going to do something organically and then go out there and start spending a thousand dollars on these on these cell phone companies <laughs> <laughs> and and you guys had to do triple to triple overtime to promote some of the worst games of all time that's because they were acquired by Sony and guess what? Your credibility of your podcast becomes irrelevant because you've been lying for weeks for these games. So less and less people will watch your show. And guess what? They'll gravitate to me and Slash Show. Clap it up. <laughs> so they got to go overtime to promote games like uh, uh, Returnal. Returnal was garbage, Sly. We spotted that a thousand miles away, did we not? Wait a minute, what's Returnal again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We spotted that a thousand miles away. Yeah. And we were called crazy. <laughs> well, you guys are crazy, man. <laughs> I'm worried about your mental health. No, I'm worried about your mental health. You thought Returnal was going to be lit? We spy it, Ratchet, and click a thousand miles away. Did we not? And now look at Returnal. And now look at Ratchet and Clink. And now look at these losers. Mad because Microsoft can open up their wallets, man, and they can just do whatever they want, man. And they just, they got this arrogance about them, man. And they, what are these little liberals? They call it, um, what do they call that, these little liberals? Uh, um, uh, uh, not entitlement. Is it entitlement? They got this entitlement yeah. entitlement about themselves, where they think they can just do whatever oh, they yeah. they can just do whatever they want to do. Yeah. But look, Sly. I want you to look at their faces while they're talking. The reason I want you to look at their faces, Sly and Chat. Excuse me. I, I, Sly's here, so I can help but talk to him. <laughs> Plus, that's my dude right there. I hate him, but that's my guy. 
listen, Sly, listen, Sly. When you watch the Marvel movies, and I'm sorry to go here, right? But when you watch the Marvel movies, the one of the things that I, I love so much is that they don't like each other. Captain America doesn't like Iron Man. Iron Man doesn't like this person, that person. You know, you saw Civil War. They were all fighting with each other. But listen, at the end of the day, they can all come together and put their feelings for their, each other aside to fight against evil, right or wrong. Right, fight so, the common enemy. Yeah, so me and you, we don't like each other. I'm pretty sure you will kick me down a flight of stairs for no reason. You will poison my food. You will poison my water supply. Right? But we can come yeah. together. <laughs> we can come together to come out the, the true evil. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Sly, I want you to pay attention. Look at their faces. Look. And from my perspective, they have to buy things because they're so terrible at managing their own teams. Look at the last decade. Okay, look at since the entire Xbox One generation, even slightly before that. Look at games like Crackdown, right? Crackdown 3. Look at how they handled Fable. Look at how they handled their most valuable IP with Halo since Bungie's been gone. Plus, Plus Phantom Dust canceled, Scalebound canceled. canceled. I was, I was yeah. about to mention that. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Scalebound, Scalebound was canceled because Platinum Games was stealing money from Microsoft. That was one of the reasons why I had a, a ban on Platinum Games. I was like, I don't like their games anyway. And I don't like that they were taking money from Microsoft. So yes, that's the reason why Scalebound had to be canceled. And everybody wants to blame Microsoft for that. Microsoft's like, hey, we didn't have anything to do with that. We just, you know. They even handle their second party relationships. So what do they do? They resort to just buying studios and you better pray that they don't get involved with the management of these teams because look at the history. Just look at it, right? And I think that yeah. they very wisely, at least for now, said that they're going to let Bethesda continue to be like a, a sub-managed brand uh, because you better hope that they don't get involved because they continually are screwing up over and over again. And the same thing could be said for The Last of Us. Look what they did to The Last of Us. The same could be said to Japan Studios. They got involved with Japan Studios and said, you have to go completely. They can, the same can be said for thousands of games over there at PlayStation. Look what they did with Destruction Derby All-Stars. The hell is that? The same thing can be said for Sony. Yes, in the past 10 years, Whatever it was, it was over there at Microsoft. Things have been a little shaky, but it's a new day. It's a new era for play uh, for for Xbox, and I believe them. And if they can do that, and and Sony said it was okay. Sony said this is the new generation, and I didn't see none of these motherfuckers get mad at Disney when they were going out and they were acquiring movie studios. They actually applauded it. But the reason I say this, Sly, look at their faces. They know something. Of course. They know well, something. I'm looking at their faces and listening to their voices. Yeah. And I'm seeing like the same faces here and the same voices that I hear with like actors and po like these liberal politicians when they want to try to push their agendas. They yes. all use the same face and the same voice. Yes. The same inflections and stuff. Yes. They know the end is near. Yes. They want to try to like make the, make the situation seem like real dire to people. Exactly. They want to have like make people have sympathy for them and stuff. Exactly, it's real strange how yeah. they do this. Exactly, what you call it makes that was making that same face. Um, the guy that did the last, that directed the Last of Us two, and they gave him all those awards, and he was just looking down, and he was just like, "Hey, thank you, man, thank you for the reward." He's like a sympathetic figure now. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? 
Uh, damn, I keep forgetting people's uh, names. <laughs> Neil Neil Druckmann. I almost called him the other name. Neil Druckmann. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's the name that popped in mind too. But they know something. They know something. The way that they're talking, the way that they're looking down, they know something. They know Microsoft because you know rumors and, and not rumors, but information swirls around and it gets to the gaming media, and the gaming media hears these things. And they know stuff before you know about it. They knew about uh, Wolverine and all that, and Spider Man, uh, uh, Spider Man Two, and they were gonna. They knew the reason I knew because they were telling people with the Nintendo Direct. They just wanted to uh, email and some links to some videos. Uh, but when it came to the PlayStation Showcase, they were like, "You guys have to watch the showcase tomorrow, man! Oh my God, it's gonna knock your socks off, man!" And then we're watching it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And I remember, like a day before, a day before that PlayStation thing, IGN put out some type of poll saying which which um, superhero would win in a fight, Spider Man or Wolverine. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they knew. Like it was the day before the. Um, yeah, they knew. They already know. So they know something. They know Microsoft is about to make a big deal, a major move. And now they have to come out and they got to downplay it. And they're gonna say, well. Yeah, but look what they did with this and they did with that and this and this and that and this, you know? Yeah, they want to get people conditioned. Yeah. To already be disappointed with yeah. whatever Microsoft exactly. does. Exactly, exactly, days. exactly, Sly. They want to get you conditioned to be upset with whatever they buy. Even though Sony bought Housemark and Bluepoint and, and, and all these other companies for $1,000 and, and, and some stickers or something like that, some food stamps. We got to get excited for that. Welcome to the family. Oh, my God. Welcome to the family. But they know something. Something big is about to happen again. I wish it was Sega. I don't think it's going to be the case. Yeah, I was going to say Sega. I think it's going to be something big in the aspects for, you know, like Grand Theft Auto. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's why they were talking about that. Yeah. Putting these little uh, hints out there. Yeah. Would I care with that? Would that bother? Would that? Would I? Would you look at this? Uh, PlayStation Studios acquires Manchester based Fabric Games. What the hell is this? <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, names. oh my God, this is so exciting. <laughs> look at this. Hold on. My boy Jabari, he, he came out with a list. My boy Jabari, he came out with a list. And these are all the studios that PlayStation on in, in slide. Please stop me when you hear a studio that you recognize. PlayStation Family, Ben Studio, Blue Point, Fire Sprite, Guerrilla Games, Housemark, Insomniac, London Studios, Malaysia Studios, Media Molecule. Slide, stop me when you hear a studio. You hear Naughty Dog, <laughs> Mix Software, Pixel Plus, Poly Digital, San Diego Studios, San Mani San Mateo Studios. Santa Monica, Sucker Punch, Team Asobi, X Dev. These are the studios that they acquired. And you don't even know, you didn't even stop me because you don't know what the hell this garbage is. <laughs> and, naughty Dog. What's that? What's, oh, not, oh, damn, Naughty Dog. Sorry, I, didn't, I forgot what that company was for a second. Yeah. And the reason you know about Naughty Dog is because the, the gaming media has been slapping Naughty Dog in your face. For the past 15 years now. And you're like, you you still don't get the uh, you still don't get the appeal. Slide. I remember you said something to me the other day. We were in the Discord, and you said something, something that was so profound, but I never felt this way. And I'm not saying this to tease you, but it was so profound to me what you said. And you probably don't remember when you told me this. You're gonna remember when I tell you. I remember you told me you were playing Naughty Dog games back in the day, but you didn't feel anything. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you didn't. Yeah. You, you felt. You felt soulless when you were playing these yeah, games. Yeah, felt nothing. Yeah, you felt nothing. But when you went to school or you went around the masses, you felt like you had to put on a a show to let them believe that you know this was good because you wanted to be part of of the the crowd or something like that. Correct. I'm not even school, but like just on the internet, because I didn't really talk to nobody in school. Yeah, like yeah, on yeah. The internet. Yeah. Like, uh, like online forums and stuff. People like praising these uh, Naughty Dog games. I didn't know why. I, yeah. I try to play them, and like it was just like nothing to me. It was nothing. That's the same way that I feel when it pertains to these PlayStation games. I'm playing them, and I don't, I don't feel anything. I'm like, what? 
where's where's the game? At? Where's the excitement? Yeah, yeah where's, where's the game? Where's all this crazy love that everybody's experiencing? Where's the 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 people sitting around and talking and breaking down The Last of Us 2? Where are The Last of Us 2 three-hour retrospective videos at? <laughs> exactly. Look at these look at these studios. What the hell is this? And I'm supposed to believe that Sony's supposed to be doing big things with these studios? Since when in PlayStation history have they ever done anything that big? If, imagine if the gaming media wasn't as biased as they were. PlayStation would be out of here. I can't believe that we were treating Housemark like it was the next Elder Scrolls Skyrim. The game only did 300,000, Sly. And the 300,000 was, the 300, was from Sony fanboys. Look at this. Look at Sony. Hey, everyone. This is Herman Hulse, head of PlayStation Studios. As you probably know, we got a commitment to quality here at PlayStation. And that is... Sly, I'm going to play that one more time. Hey, everyone. This is Herman Hulse, head of PlayStation Studios. As you probably know, we got a commitment to quality here at PlayStation. <sighs> Him and Jim Ryan are the ones that are destroying the PlayStation Bank <laughs> as we know it. Um, and him and Jim Ryan, they're running with this this narrative. They're running with this new narrative now. They've been doing this narrative, running this narrative before the PlayStation 5 came out. And the narrative is quality, right? We're, yeah. we're committed to quality. And you look at games like Housemark where people want their money back because the game keeps crashing on them. When you look at games like Ratchet and Clank, where Ratchet and Clank, the characters, literally running, and all of a sudden he just starts going in through the floors and he gets glitched up and he starts falling through the, the, the universe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had a I had a Sony fanboy tell me, how can you get excited about Zelda falling from the skies? When there was a ratchet and clank glitch where he was falling in the skies, I said that because like that's broken. Ratchet and clank is not supposed to be falling through the skies. They were literally rewarding glitches in ratchet and clank. Uh, you look at the new Spider-Man Miles Morales. Spider-Man's literally walking around with no head. You should see some. Yeah, of the, I remember that. Yeah, you should see some of the glitches in these Spider-Man games. What's this quality? They got the nerve to trash uh, Cyberpunk and Fallout in Vegas. I know. Cyberpunk, the, the, the glitches were normal. Were, okay, somebody was walking in the air. So what? I, I saw that in every game. Exactly. Somebody popped in. Yeah, Damn. somebody. Yeah, poof, it's about to... <laughs> uh, the car, when they were driving, also the car just started flying. You know? But if, if it was like a, a, any other game, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It'd be funny, right? If they would make a good little compilation video, it'd be hilarious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But 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 <laughs> but 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 a game that's being promoted under Microsoft and Microsoft was able to do some type of exclusive, some type of promotional deal with them, all of a sudden, oh my god. I mean, come on, man. The glitches are just unbearable. I mean, oh my god, right? Yeah. But Sony is running this new quality campaign, but I gotta call them out. Where's the quality at? Where is it? And the reason that they're running this new quality campaign, because the quality campaign is quality over quantity. And I've always been telling people, I want you guys to get ready because for the past 10 years, it was PlayStation was better because it had so many exclusives. It was so many exclusives. That's the reason why it's so better than Microsoft, even though Nintendo Switch has more, but everybody ignores Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch has more exclusives than the PlayStation 5 and four combined, and the PlayStation 4 has been out what, five or six years before the Nintendo Switch even came out. But they're running this new campaign of quality over quantity. And that's a shot at Microsoft and Nintendo. Microsoft is going to be getting a quantity of games, and they currently have a quantity of games on their Xbox Game Pass for $9.99 a month, and you get access to over hundreds of games. And Nintendo yep. Switch is the king of games because they get so many exclusives, especially from Japan. So, uh, uh, speaking of that, we just had Tokyo Game Show, Sly. 
And I want you to guess, because Tokyo Game Show was always PlayStation focused, always. And I want you to guess how many exclusive PlayStation 5 games and or PlayStation 4 games were shown at Tokyo Game Show. What's your guess? One. Oh, you already know. One, yeah. <laughs> it was one game shown. Now, I, I got I to gotta pull out the facts because if I don't, people are going to say, you don't know what you're talking about, man. You don't know what you're talking about. And I, I got to make sure that I show the proof. Hold on real quick. Hold on. Uh, damn it. You know, I can't because this is going to take me out of my, my thing. But forget it. But anyway, I'll post the link and I'll show you guys. There was only one. There was only one exclusive shown. And it was still coming to PC and Steam at Tokyo Game Show. It really shows you that Sony is not messing with Japan. They're not messing with Japan. What's it? And Japan's not messing with them either. And that's good. And Nintendo Switch got, guess how many, uh, Sly? I think I saw it was like 80 something. Uh, it was 20. It was 20. Oh, okay, 20. 20 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I got 80 from, but. Yeah, I saw the 82. I think it was 80 games were shown for Nintendo Switch, and 20 of them are exclusive. Yeah. 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 Japan's done. As they should be. Yeah, Japan's always ahead of the curve. Oh, yeah. Ten times ahead of the curve. You know what else is ahead of the curve? The x Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Sony's running this whole quality over quantity campaign, and it's cute, and, and that's going to be something that they're going to be running with in the next ten years. When Microsoft starts to drop all these bangers and games and Nintendo's are dropping all these bangers and games and watch, you're going to start seeing the gaming media. You're going to start seeing Sony. And yes, you're going to see the start seeing the Sony cockroaches. I don't call them ponies because I, I think that's corny. Call them Sony cockroaches because that's what Japan calls them. And yes, you're going to see them running with that same thing. Well, it's going to be, we got quality over here, man. Yeah? Who cares about all those games, man? You know what? Games exclusively don't even matter, man. Look at all this quality that we have. It's all about quality. <laughs> it starts up top. It's like it starts from the top. It starts from the top. It's the tribalism that that Phil Spencer was talking about. It starts from up top. Of course. It starts with Sony. Where's the quality? Like they're worried about quality. Where, where's the fun? Where's the quality? <laughs> yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like, what is the quality of these people? Yeah, yeah. Like, are they talking about like like the SSD or whatever? Well, the, 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 that was a lie. That was a lie. We confirmed that uh, was it last week or so. The, the SSD yeah, no, that was that yeah, was a like, scam. That was bogus. All right, Sly. Let's uh, let's get to the final topic, man, because we don't have much time. Um, I, I feel cringy when I do three. What the, what the hell am I talking about? I saw a thing in my my video, and um, I saw one of my videos, and I, I did three hours. I was like, what the hell am I talking about for three hours? You know what I mean? And the weird thing is that I went to go look at the view, the 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 you know the statistics, and people were watching it. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with these people? I'm I'm clinically insane. I, I belong in some type of uh, a straight jacket, and these people are sitting here and listening to this garbage. Three hours. Anyway, let's get to the point of the video. Let me say what's up to my chat room real quick, and then we're going to get up out of here. Uh, Ugly HR Gaming, you can play half those games on Sony Xperia. Yeah. Quality is for textures only. I guess that's what they mean. It's, you know, our games are going to be looking uh, photorealistic. Who cares? It's like Slide says, where's the fun? We, we come here to play games. We don't want to be be flooded with 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 violence and, and, and photorealistic and characters that don't even look real you're making women with muscles and stuff like that and then you're pushing all these weird agendas what the hell is wrong with sony yo man nanko bandai sold us out so uh, uh sly they sold us out yeah definitely square enix sold us out too capcom sold us out they're all going down the, the liberal route it went after, they went after, they went after the big three. They went after the big three that I would say that these are the three companies that I would say that I purchased most of their games from. I, I purchased mostly Square Enix games. I purchased uh, 
mostly Capcom games to a degree, especially back in the in the nineties, two thousands, early two thousands. And Naoko Bandai is, of course, I've been buying their games, so games like Nino Kuni, Dark Souls, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, and things such, things of that such. But they sold this out, man, and it's messed up. And uh, they sold their souls too. Sold their souls, yeah, yeah. When you sold, when you sell out the people, you sell out your soul. And and listen, if y'all ever said Zobi sold out, yeah, I sold out. I've been sold out. <laughs> I'm telling y'all now, I sold out. <laughs> you sold out, Zobi man. You said you hated Sony. Now you're taking a check. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> our current. This is, a, this is a report from Nanko Banda, a Bandai Namco. Our current logo expresses the fusion of Bandai and Namco that was created when the two companies integrated. It will be replaced with a new logo and reflects our new purpose. All companies with the Bandai Namco, all companies with Bandai Namco in their names will use this logo. And in principle, companies with and without Bandai Namco in their names, will display this new group uh, logo in all their products and services. This will enable us to bring together the values, all of our products, services, and labels under one logo and elevate the brand value of Bandai Namco Group in the global market. Yeah. It looks like, Nan I'm sorry, but my reading was not up to par. Like I said, I didn't graduate high school. Like y'all did, because you guys are smarter than I am. But listen. <laughs> Bando Nanko, fun for all in the future. That just sounds demonic. Yeah. When you start seeing globalism and you start seeing all and all inclusive. Exactly. Once you start, yeah, exactly. Once yeah. you start seeing like inclusive and all, yeah. you know, you know, it's about to be some bull. You know, you know, it's doomed. And I should have seen this coming because remember, slide we were playing the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and, and on stream, Pick Goku was telling his five year old son that Grandpa was a pervert, and I was just like, yeah. oh, whoa, what the hell is this? What what is this? What's what's going on here? Goku doesn't talk like that. <laughs> Goku doesn't even have an understanding of what all that is. You know what I mean? The only thing Goku knows about is food and fighting. That's it. Food, fighting, and, and the other F with Chi-Chi. He's sitting around and telling Gohan, a five-year-old kid, about... I was like, yeah, that's something like something the Western... Somebody in the chat room said the Japanese version doesn't have that uh, line in there. That was something the West had put in. And yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay, cool. Yeah, that was my first red flag. Yeah, that line. That was like a real strange line to just throw in there. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I, I, I. What is their their main goal or purpose? But I can only go off of what I'm seeing right now when it pertains to the gaming media, the movie media, CNN, and things of that such. Is that they're pushing it, pushing this all inclusive global. Uh, a way of thinking. They want everybody to be thinking a certain way. They want everybody to be doing a certain thing so that they can be easier to control you with. A lot of people think that they're doing it because they care when they don't, because if they really care, these people have enough money to end homelessness, especially people like BG, not BG games, but BG with the, the, the fake nerd that, that built Microsoft. He has so much money that he can end homelessness in America alone and still be a billionaire. Amazon, all these big corporations that want to get behind the agenda. And yet, if you was to go out there and you were sitting there and hungry and you asked for a dollar, they would walk over your punk ass slide. Yep. But then... Um when you ask them, they got enough money to block out the sun, right? Yeah. Listen. <sighs> yeah. These corporations are all getting under one program. And I know Bandai Namco is only doing this because they want to get nines and tens for their games so that people and the idiots can run out there and buy these garbage, terrible games 
Tales of Arise is not a nine and a ten. So let's stop. It's a good game. I like it. But I'll forget about it as soon as I'm done with it. As a matter of fact, I, I forget that I'm playing it currently. I, oh my God, I forgot I was playing Tales of Arise. Let me show you who, um, let me show you Sly in chat room who Bandai Namco are submitting to, who Sony are submitting to, who Square Enix is submitting to, who Capcom is Square submitting to. Let me show you who they're submitting to. Let me show you, Sly. Sly, let me show you, bro. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> no, ahead. no, when I do that, I'm trolling you. <laughs> I did that last I did that last week, and I, don't, I was like, well, I don't think Sly does. I'm joking around. Look at this, Sly. Look at this. This is who they're submitting to. Check this out. Look at this. Ooh, look at this. This is an old video, I believe. This is a real old video. Here we go. Bow. And boom. This is the reason why we have to change our games um, because of them. And the first project we started kind of, excuse me, moving forward on was called Mankind. Check this out, uh, Check this and out. the idea is very similar to what you've seen in The Last of Us. That this is Neil. This is Neil Druckmann. Sly. Shift has jumped from insects to people, uh, and people it infects it can kind of create monsters uh, or kill them. Uh, but the twist, the thing that was different about this idea was that it only infected women. Uh, and you found the one girl that it didn't infect, and that was Ellie. Uh, and you kind of protected her and tried to, like, bring her to this lab where they were kind of finding a cure. Um, and there were a lot of things that we were really excited about this idea, but ultimately it failed. Uh, and the reason it failed is because it was a misogynistic idea. What are the things that she's going to be kind of really attracted to and attached to um, as she grows up? Uh, and as a game creator, I look around at kind of what we are making and what are going to be her role models from, from these stories. And I don't like what I see. <clears throat> wow. See that? See that slide? Yeah, man. See what they come. And also, why is... Why is misogyny a bad thing, but feminism isn't? Wow. <laughs> Bow! Pulled out a cannon on these fools. Yeah, the matriarch is bad, but the patriarch... No, the patriarch is bad, but the matriarch is good. You know what I mean? And it just hit me, too. I never thought about that until yeah. now. Neil Druckmann had an idea for a game. It was supposed to be called Mankind, and... It, it was supposed to infect just women, which I don't believe he was. Somebody like him was going to create something like that. But he, yeah, that sounds made. Yeah, up. it just sounds stupid. Especially the name. Yeah, it just sounds stupid. But he's an idiot. He's going to go up there and talk to these liberals out there in California, and try to get everybody under this new agenda, the new law. And look at this. Look at this. He's coming directly at the Japanese games. I believe that game over oh, for the far right is a, is a Bandai Namco game. Was it Dead or Alive? Is that made by Bandai Namco? Uh, I can't I'm remember. Not sure. Probably. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hey, look who they're coming after. He put up slides of Japanese people, Japanese character designs, artists. They're all that he claims are misogynist. Look, look at Bill Druckmann. More specifically, I'm talking about our female characters. And whether we want to admit it or not, these are role models. And we sexualize, we objectify, we marginalize, and we reduce these female characters a lot less than they can be. And this is coming from a guy that almost made a really misogynistic game. So I kind of know what I'm talking about. You get an audience. So once this thing failed, yeah. and this thing, almost at exactly the same time, um, Look at this. this Kickstarter happened about the trolls versus women in video games. And while you might argue with the way it delivers its message or whether every point is, is exact, you can't argue with just the pattern that you see in the industry. Uh, so I, I was really intrigued by this. The videos for the video games haven't come out yet, but I watched 
the rest, rest of Anita's videos, videos and realize it's not just a problem in games, it's actually throughout entertainment. These are the people that they're submitting to, Sly. Yeah. Yeah. Anita Shayakizian is not, <clears throat> she's just the one to take the fall. And she's the only one that's, you know what I mean? She's not alone on this. Even though he is shot, everybody's going to say Anita Sharkeesian, Anita Sharkeesian. Oh. Trust me, Anita Sharkeesian is not intelligent enough to, to run this whole campaign to basically destroy Japanese gaming. Japanese gaming is thriving right now, and they won't tell you that because they're full, only focused on the West here. But the, the, these Japanese games that are quote-unquote misogynistic are destroying these games that are supposedly quote unquote focus on making women look like better role models i didn't see a role model in ellie i saw a demon i yeah. did yeah i saw a demon i didn't see a role model in abigail what was so role mo a model model about that beating a, a defenseless and innocent man to death with a uh, golf club i didn't yeah i didn't see nothing i didn't see a role model in that that was demonic These are the people that they're submitting to. These are the people that Nanko Bandai is submitting to. Selling out their own people. Yeah. They By allow the way, what happened to this whole um, stop Asian hate oh, debacle? Well, uh, Joe Biden cut them a check. Oh, is that what happened? Joe Biden cut them a check, and after that, everything was good. <clears throat> so that's why Sony can... Um, campaign for the deletion of Japanese games, the cancelization of Japanese games. Yeah. Joe Biden cut him a check. Uh, he, he wasn't in office for no more than three or four months. And as soon as he got in there, he they they did a um they just did it when I saw Suicide Squad, I automatically connected to Stop Asian Hate. Why did I say that? It's because I saw they, they were showing clips of black men, these big burly black men running up on Asian people and attacking them. Bow, and I was just like, "What the hell? This is this doesn't even seem, this doesn't seem right. Like it doesn't seem, you know what I mean? I, I know that we painted the African American, the black man, as this demonic uh, being that walks around raping white women and attacking Asian people. But when I saw that, I just said, "This doesn't seem. This is weird." And what really got my antennas up was. There was this big black guy in New York. He was big. He was huge. And he was wearing this pink shirt. They, all these attackers were wearing pink shirts. And yeah. And this big black burly guy walked up to an Asian woman and bow. And like they weren't mad at the big black guy for attacking the Asian woman. They were mad at the, the black guys that were standing in the corner and didn't do anything about it. That's when my antennas really started to go off. But when my antennas really went off, they went off. They went and found the, they, they, it came real quickly, then it went away. And they found out that this black guy has a criminal record. He He's so insane, he killed his own mother and was sitting there and laying in the blood and laughing. The guy is crazy. And yet he's walking around in the streets of New York City. And then that's when my antennas went up when I was watching the Suicide Squad, where they were grabbing people out of prison to perform these acts to, to, to lessen their, their prison stay. The same thing was in Suicide Squad. And in every Suicide Squad, they always get a black guy to be the leader of the squad. Why is that? Because just in case if the mission goes wrong, you know, we say it just some deranged Negro. <laughs> It was just a deranged day, girl. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up. I said, how the hell is this crazy mother flipper on the streets? You allowed him to go on the streets to attack Asian people. That's what my, I said, this is, this is, this is Suicide Squad, man. Straight up Suicide Squad. Now that's a good superhero movie. I recommend people go watching uh, this, this, the second one, not the first one. Yeah, that's that was a, a really good. Yeah, that that's, was like my probably my favorite superhero movie. Yo, no, 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 Sly, no, Sly, real talk. That was one of my favorite superhero movies of all, uh, damn there of all time. Yeah, me too, of all time. I put yeah. it in like top two. <laughs> For real, that was cool. I liked it, the part at the end when it was fighting the giant creature, 
and he was giving out instructions. Harley, you go up top. Blase, blah, blah. You know, that's, you know, I, I was like, I liked it. That, that was, that was lit. Cause he was about, he was going to do what Zobi said he was going to do. Hey, the mission's over. Let's just go home. But then, you know, something in my head, the most high would have talked to me and said, Hey, you know what? I gave you these skills and these abilities. It's time to go ahead and use them. At the end of the day, I would prefer to be sitting around having three or four women coming through a day and not shooting this podcast, not talking about saving gaming, not coming after the, 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 the agenda. I would rather be just doing that all day. But listen, the most high says we got work to do. Yeah. And take Sly's punk ass and go do it. <laughs> yeah, these are the people that they are submitting to. Oh, don't look at my notes, guys. Don't look at my notes. I hope you guys aren't looking at my notes. God dang it. Just look at this. Hold on. I don't like that song. Is he going to be talking? Fans to a better place. Anita Sarkeesian's work has done just that. Yeah, these are the people that they're submitting to. A feminist and a media critic, Anita is a fan of popular culture. Anita Sarkeesian is not the one in charge. There is somebody behind the scenes with the puppet strings. Of course. I don't want people in the chat room just, you know, Anita Sarkeesian. There's always somebody behind the scenes. She's just the figurehead. She's the agent of the chaos. Yes, exactly, Sly. Listen, uh, Sly, we'll end the video with this. Um, hold on real quick. It, it, well, to, to get on another thing, Sly, I, I'm glad you're here because we could talk about the... We just talked. We just broke it down, the Suicide Squad. We could talk about crazy things. And, and I'm glad because I can't talk about these type of things uh, with too many people because they're, they're going to think I'm crazy. But I have a problem with globalism. I have a problem with being global. Why? And I want you guys to hear me out on this one. I saw how globalism destroyed the African-American community. Uh, we had Marxist globalist agents like Martin Luther King who came in and tried to push this whole one nation under a groove type of, we all can come together and hold hands as brothers and sisters. And we can all come together and free at last, good old God almighty and free at last. And I seen how his words still affect the African-American community till this day in a negative way. Before Martin Luther King, African-Americans were doing and thriving on their own before they, Martin Luther King told us to come together and hold hands with, with Caucasians and, and Hispanics and all this other weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The African Americans were thriving. They were thriving so they much. They had their own. Yeah, go ahead, Sly. Yeah, they had their own schools, their own jobs, their own like land. Yeah. They they all like, types of stuff. They call they talk about Tulsa, Oklahoma, but there are there there are black communities all over the world. When they got out of slavery, quote unquote, got out of slavery, there were thriving communities. They left African Americans alone for like, for like a couple of months, and they went to go check on them. And they, I swear, Sly, they saw flying cars. <laughs> it was a flying car. They was like, "Oh my God, we didn't left these African Americans alone. What the hell is going on?" And they started bombing these peoples. No, I'm serious. They started literally setting planes over these communities and dropping bombs on them. They started flooding these communities. They were thriving. They were, do they were doing better than Caucasian people. The Nation of Islam at that time with Elijah Muhammad was thriving. You saw black people speaking so eloquently, like the Malcolm X's and, and things of that such. And then that's they what had their own TV shows, their own movie uh industry yes. and everything. Yes, they had their own, they had their own, they had their own, and they didn't do it with globalism. They did it by being conservative. They were forced to be conservative because Caucasian said people say get away from me. And that was fine. In my opinion, that's cool. I'm okay. I'm okay with blacks and whites only drinking fountains. Have you been in the bathrooms with a Caucasian person, Sly? Yeah. <laughs> Farting, uh, you know, using the bathrooms and grunting and then going and not washing their hands while walking out. 
doo doo stains on the walls. It, it's disgusting. I would prefer to have segregated bathrooms. I cannot believe when I watch these 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 struggle black movies that the biggest problem was that I had to use the blacks only bathroom. The blacks only bathroom was so far. Oh my god. Oh, and I had to use the blacks only water fountain. Oh my god. Oh, it was just so bad. Oh, the water. I didn't taste as good as the white water fountains. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> What a yeah, that's a narrative. Yeah. And they keep pushing it in these movies over and over and over again. And it took one brave white guy to come in and say, no, no more whites only bathrooms. For now on, everybody can use the same bathroom. And it, and it, guess who's the quickest and the fastest to jump up? The main globalist leader of them all. Guess who's like? Guess who? Oh, <laughs> oh, the queen of globalism, the queen of globalism is that goddamn black woman because she believes in her head that she is the mother goddess of this planet. They even try to push these people as mother goddess art types like Oprah and Beyonce, the queen bees. The only time the black woman complains about racism is whenever a white man doesn't want to sleep with them. Excuse me, doesn't want to marry them. I literally seen black women forget about all the atrocious things that George Bush has done in his eight years of election, all because he snuggled up with, with Michelle Obama. I have literally seen these black communities where they kick the black men out and they're all ran by black women. I've seen how these communities look. They're atrocious. All, all, all gone to dust. But when the black man was running these communities, they were thriving. Now the black women in the government run your communities. Is this an attack on the black woman? No, I'm just telling you, I've seen what this globalism does, man. And it's affected my community first. It's been tested out on my community first. I've seen the destruction of the patriarch given to the matriarch. And it was a better way to control these people, these African-American people. So that's the reason why I have a problem when I start hearing these terms in these agendas, taking George Floyd and making him into a Martin Luther King art type, talking about what we need to do is get rid of the police. We need to defund the police for George Floyd. Who the hell is this guy? Exactly. I've been saying that for uh, years, ever since, you know, this whole thing started. And just like they always want to make a martyr out of somebody, just a random dude. Yeah. So this is the reason why I have a problem with globalism because I, it's the destruction. It's the end. This is one of the reasons why the Great Flood happened because everybody was coming together and God felt like, hey, if these people are coming together, they're playing against me. This is the reason why God built different nations where people speak different languages. Exactly. Guys are like, oh, oh, these people coming against me? They plotting against me? And they are. <laughs> you look at these little images. People got these 666s six, six, in their titles. They're throwing up these little OK signs. They're winking with one eye and things like that such. Yes, they're coming after you the most high. So this is the reason why I have a problem when I see things like this. And the main thing I wanted to point out was this color. We were fusing the two colors together. We took the yellow and the red and we came with this color, man. And when I, that was the first thing that I saw when they showed the new, this new symbol slide was that color. I was like, man, that color is, it's a strange color. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't want to make a big deal because I just said, I, I, when I first saw it, my my antennas already my what you call it my inward uh, spidey sense my inward senses, yeah, yeah, inward senses yeah. <laughs> my inward senses started going off because 
<laughs> because when I, I I I saw that, but I didn't. It, it was nothing. It was just we got a new symbol. All of a sudden, I saw that this scene. Uh, we're looking. We're changing, and we're looking to more expand to a more of a global market. And I go, you you do anime games. You do Dragon Ball Z and Naruto, like. You know, I, Dragon Ball Z and Naruto, it, it's as global as it's going to get. What 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 more do you need to do? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And we'll definitely back, be back on this podcast to talk about it. But when I saw this color, I ought to, you know, I think started moving in me. And I, I just said, this, this is a strange color. Check this out, Sly. Let me know if I'm going, let me know if I'm going too far, Sly. Let me know if I'm, I'm you know what I mean? Let me know if my Negro senses are going a little bit too far. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wisdom, what's up, man? Uh, Neil Druckmann needs to seriously touch some grass. Damn, man. Yeah. Let me know if I'm going a little bit too far, Sly. It's chat room. Let me know. When I saw that, is your screen, you can see this? Yeah, I saw that, and it was the same colors that the, is the bisexual, the bisexual flag it had that same red. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw the red, the purple, and the blue, and I, I just—it's the same exact color as the bisexuality flag. Look at that; it's that same exact color. Very interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'm just out there. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe I'm tripping, you know? Did you read a little bit further in the article? What, 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 what you got something else? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can share my story. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Sly. Please. You know? Please. I talked to you. Go ahead, Sly. Yeah, I looked at one article before the uh, stream. I'm looking at it now on Kotaku. See if you can find the Kotaku. Kotaku like, go Kotaku. kind of um, towards the bottom. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you have a link to uh, to the article? Yeah, I'll drop it in the yeah, Discord. Yeah, put it in this Discord. Yeah, yeah, please. Zobi and Sly, still point guard and center. So much money it's on like the game. Chat. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, Sly, please. Please, Sly, expose these weirdos. I gotta find a better way to do this. It's just, it's just crazy. Uh, was it this one? Yeah, here it is. All right, what you got, Sly? Bandai Namco changes its logo, and fans think it kind of sucks. Yeah, go ahead, Sly. Sly, oh damn. Sly, you there? To, um, yeah, go okay. to. I'm looking, I'm looking for it now. Okay, sorry, my bad. There was like a quote. Um, I'm not sure who it's by. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, go to the. Uh, you have it up on your screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. Go to the, like, the um, second. There's like a um, paragraph where they like list quotes and stuff. Then there's uh, another quoted paragraph. Go to that second quoted paragraph. Okay, hold on. Okay, uh, fundamental to, to our purpose is the idea of connecting. Is that it? Yeah, that's the one. All right, go ahead. Slide, read it. Oh, hell, I got to go back to the article. Go ahead. And, no, read the article. Slide, you, you listen, you're a high school graduate. I'm not. Go ahead and read. All right, the new logo speech bubble motif, fuk- Fukidashi in Japanese, expresses the potential of brand to connect people around the world and inspire them with amazing ideas. Mm-hmm. So um, that's basically a word for globalism. Yeah. Speech bubble also represents Japan's manga c- culture that has become so popular everywhere. The logo stands for our determination to communicate with fans worldwide, to connect with our fans, and to create entertainment unique to Bandai Namco. Uh, and here's where the, um, this is what I was talking about right here. Yeah, this yeah. is the kicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, the magenta is used as the motif color, not only represents diversity but also creates a bright and fun impression and is easy to reproduce. Mm, mm, mm. It sounds hot. I told you right there. It's Yeah, it sounds hot on paper, but I 
Martin Luther King sounded hot. Martin Luther King, it sounded hot. Yeah, we can all come together as one nation and we can, white people are able to hold hands with black people and da 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 But I, 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 I seen what that Martin Luther King speech has done. It has detrimented the community. And I, I, the same thing's going to happen for gaming. It sounds like we're going to be including everybody. We're going to be coming together and holding hands, even though we're not going to help the poor. We're going to continue to help the rich. We're going to continue to help these corporations. We're going to continue to push these agendas. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but, you know, me and Sly will come back and we will say, I told you so. We will. We will. No, no, listen, I don't want to tell you, uh, I didn't tell you, I told you so, but listen, I don't want to do that. No, me and Sly, we want to do that. <laughs> We're going to no do it. Feeling in the world. Yeah, there's no better feeling in the world than telling somebody, I told you so, you idiot. And you know what else is concerning, uh, Sly? Because you said something about Namco Bandai is getting, is, is, has, they're making anime games, right? And Sony bought Funimation and Crunchyroll. So you know there's going to be some heavy censorship coming to your animes very soon. Oh, wow. For those of you who were sitting around parading and going, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Crunchyroll. Fun. Wait till you see what happens. Idiots. Now, thank you so much, Sly, for, for that information, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Um, we're going to get up out of here, though. With that being said, let me get back to that color. Let me get back to that color. Let's let me know if I'm going too far. Let me know, Zoby, you're off on this, man. You're way off, man. You don't know what you're talking about. That's not the same color. It's the same color in the in the bisexual flag. I believe it's the same color in the trans flag as well. Not the trans. Is this the trans flag? Uh, this blue, uh, pinkish, reddish thing. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, they just said the, um, the color was to promote diversity. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah, the trans flag. Yep. Yeah, it's, it. it's all it's all here. Let's look at it. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there. Beautiful. Check this out, Sly. Let me, we're going to end this, the podcast with this. We won't even comment on this. But just what is in the podcast with this. Listen, if you know what you're seeing, if listen, they're banking on you not knowing what you're seeing because they're banking on you being too stupid to understand what you are seeing. When you see things like Fat Thor, when you see things like... Uh, 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 you know, certain colors and things of that such. They're banking on you being too stupid to see, to know what you're seeing. But if you have sight beyond sight, and if you're gifted by the most high, like me and Sly, you're going to be able to see things that the average person can't see. Let me know if I'm if I'm tripping a little bit, Sly. We'll end the video with this. Look at this right here. Bow! Look, look, look at that jacket he's wearing. Oh, wow. What is this spook doing? <laughs> <laughs> and he was, he put out a threat saying, we are... We're coming. We are bringing we yeah we are bringing diversity <laughs> of the gaming and we are coming and there's nothing you're going to be able to do to stop us. He said that. You know who talks like that? A uh, uh, a brain swap. <laughs> 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 who talks like this? <laughs> uh, a certain community, you know. Yeah, we're coming to get your kids. Look, yeah, we're coming for yeah. We're, Oh my God, I saw it. It was a crazy, it was so scary. And I, I don't want to use scary because I'm not scared of nothing, but it was just creepy. Where I saw these people singing, these gay people talking about, we're coming for your kids. And they were just these homosexual people. And it was so creepy the way they were looking in the camera and singing about how they were coming for our children. They were coming for your kids. There's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. And I was like, oh, my God. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Extendo Podcast, episode 30, starring Zobie 70 and your gracious host, Sly. Yo, we'll check you guys next week. We need like a, we need, oh, also for my artists out there, um, email me uh, or, or join Discord. Can you guys come up with some type of Extendo banner in, in a theme song or something? Where are my artists at? You guys are quick to jump online and draw uh, VTubers fighting and stuff like that. But you, come on, man. Can we get an X-Tendo uh, uh, thing? Anyway, I'll take oh, you guys. Don't forget to donate to my... Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Slide. Uh, hold on, yeah. <laughs> Down, hold on, let, let me do a slide. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Down and below, we got uh, Sly's Cash App. Uh, 
please make a small patronage to Sly. Sly's going to say, <laughs> give me money now. But listen, we really need Sly to get compensated because what we do is very hard work and they're going to be coming for us. But luckily, we have you guys to protect us. But anyway, we're out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, we're, we're insane, Slug. We